Hello, everybody. My name is Christian Slider, and welcome back to That's the Flavor, your weekly podcast where I sit down with my friends and talk about my life. And sometimes I tell stories, sometimes we just goof around, sometimes we make a movie, as we did last week. Uh, this podcast is uploaded every Monday to all of your favorite podcast feeds or your one and only favorite podcast feed. And this, I think, is episode eight. I'm not sure if I said that, but it's episode eight. Uh, today, I am joined again by returning guest Matthew and also new guest to the show, Rob. So welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me this week. Thank you for having me. You know what, Matthew? You're very welcome. I'm very glad you're here. I'm so <laughs> glad. Can't even get a howdy back these days. Oh, uh, howdy. Thank you. Also, Rob, just to know where I are here at the top of the show, your audio somehow got a little like cloudier. So I'm not sure. It sounds like you're inside a cloud, but we'll roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like yeah, it's, you're inside a cumulonimbus and you're just floating around. Hanging out, having a good time. But before we hop into all that nitty gritty fixing Rob's audio kind of stuff, talking about how garbage it is. No, I'm joking. Uh, also want to let you guys know that That's the Flavor this week is brought to you by Twitter.com slash That's the Flavor. What's that? You'll find out here later in the show. And yeah, without further ado, welcome guys. We're going to go ahead and hop into it. So Matthew, you have not been on the show since February. That's like six whole months. Uh, how have you been? You know, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Huh. Just in general. Like, if you uh, had to give me an algebra equation, I think, to, to equate to, like, what you, you what state you're in right now, what would it be? I'm going to go with X cubed. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hey, that's Very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I'm glad to hear you're. You mean you're not that you're doing well, but yeah, you're here. You're having a good time. No, <laughs> I was no, gonna say I'm glad to hear you're doing well, but you didn't say I'm that. Glad, so, I'm, glad like, hear, I I'm glad to hear you're not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think that Matthew said he was improving rapidly. Yeah, quarantine oh. has been great for me. Yeah. Me yeah. too. You've been, you've been like vacuuming and stuff. Once. Oh, once, dude. How was it? It was, it was pretty life changing. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I um, vacuums. I just think that, you know, people they don't give enough credit. They don't get enough credit. <laughs> and I think that right now here on that's the flavor. Um, you know, we're gonna add on a new sponsor for the week, and that's vacuums. But we'll again talk about that more later. Um, Can we have an audio sample? <laughs> Perhaps later in the episode of interviewing a vacuum. I, I mean, I could. You might be able to pull that off. Yeah, it might be. You know, I, I have I have contacts in the vacuum world. Pull some strings, make some calls. Yeah, big vacuum likes to keep me away from that kind of stuff, but I know some big, guys. Big suck. <laughs> but well, you know, we've also been sitting here joking around with someone who's brand new to that's the flavor, and that is Rob. So for those of you guys that don't know, which is the whole audience, actually. Um, <laughs> I hope that uh, some of your audience remembers me from when I was part of their lives. Uh, you know, maybe. I mean, who knows, right? <laughs> don't, who knows? Don't joke, don't joke about that, Christian. I might cry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Rob is a really good friend of mine. Uh, we go, I don't know, we go back, I, like around the high school time, like uh, freshman year. Is that's where I jumped to, and I feel like you know, I Rob was part of the people that I knew, and then I feel like as time went on, there was like a closer and closer friendship, and then life happened, high school ended, college started, and like I think we just kind of fell off each other's radar, not because we wanted to, but that's just kind of how life happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And recently, we've been able to like kind of connect again and conversate and have a good time, and I've been really happy that that's happened. All right, so Rob, what would you say is probably your go-to Christian slider memory? Well, I think it was probably uh, when you and I were preparing to uh, take part in the high school um, high school production, the musical that we were in, and we were both having similar sort of uh, relationship issues at that time, and we were both having so, neither of us, I, I think, knew where we wanted to go in life. And we sat down in the dressing room while the uh, more talented people had their number. 
and we we just sort of laid out what each of us wanted out of life like at the time and also moving forward and i thought that was a very touching moment because it's not often that you can uh that that you can be open to speculation with somebody when you're talking about where you want your life to go right most of the time you always got to say like oh i want to do this or or you know you're you're um, at least i am afraid a lot of the time to say i don't know what i want or what to do but uh the two of us are able to sort of speculate together and i think we've both evolved and we've both changed our plans uh for what we want out of life since then but it was a it was a very touching moment that has stuck with me yeah i think that it's really interesting because i i feel like somehow uh, like we you and me have always been able to have really real conversations with each other like I... that's something that like if you just like through like out all of high school whatever show you were in or just like hanging out or whatever there's always and it's weird because, like, you know, we don't necessarily hang out a ton or anything like that. Like, especially not, like, recently, as I mentioned earlier in the show. But, like, somehow every time, like, we, we talk, I feel like we have these really real conversations that, like, we don't necessarily have with other people, you know? Yeah, when I'm not doing you violence, I think we can, I think we have some nice moments between us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what my go-to us moment is for me? which so it's it was uh when we were uh in doing the production of midsummer and we were doing a scene on stage and of course you were playing the king i was playing lysander and i looked at you and this is back when i just found out i had a lazy eye and like you had looked at like i looked at you and we did a scene and then after the scene was over you were like hey man do you know like your eye was like freaking out like and like you weren't necessarily <laughs> looking at me the entire scene and I was like no what do you mean because I didn't know that like I had one I didn't know that I had a lazy eye until then and like it's just still oh, funny to me because like, you're I like him so and you know bad. he was like you know you, you know one of your eyes wasn't looking at me and I was like what do you mean because I didn't know like I didn't process it and like looking back at it, it was, it's just really funny I I hope I I think you know but I just want to make clear for the audience that that was given totally in earnest <laughs> oh a thousand percent yeah that was uh, absolutely not a, a dig at you yeah no, and i i and again it, you and me like i knew that but yeah make just so the audience knows that he was not being malicious in that it was just rob being rob and being a good person just making sure that i knew hey man your eyes fucked up uh <laughs> you know like, yeah yeah um but and then it's funny because, like, yeah, like I said, that was right around when I knew I had a lazy eye. And did I tell you guys the original? Have I told you both of you the original story of how I thought I got my lazy eye for the longest time? Was it a fight? N no. So it was at church camp, right? Uh, yeah. For the longest time, I thought that I got my lazy eye at church camp. <laughs> like um, a blessing from the Lord or what? No. So... Uh, you know, uh, every year I hang out with the same group of guys. We make sure we always went to the camps. So we could hang out for that week that summer because we all lived in different places in PA. So it was like our one time to like hang out every year. And it was a really good time. And like, for whatever reason, things just got wild. Um, and at one point in the, uh, concrete, <laughs> in the, um, concrete showers that are like in like the wash area, someone decided to fill an empty Mountain Dew bottle full of water. Um, and they That's were too far. <laughs> And they were whipping it around the showers and, like, throwing it inside people's showers, right? Well, someone outside of one of the showers whipped it. It bounced off the wall and then came into my shower and hit me in the head. And I slipped and fell and hit my head on the concrete. Um, and for the longest time, I thought that was what gave me my lazy eye. Because I didn't start realizing it was a thing until, like, junior year. Yeah. Um, and then when that was that previous summer when it had happened and stuff. So I was like, what? what? That's crazy. And like finally my parents had to break it to me. Like whenever I brought it up to them, they're like, no, you've just always had a lazy eye. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> my whole life has been a lie. Nah. Uh, I was like, I'm everything is just. I was like, everything is just defunct. I don't know who I am anymore. You know, I think both of those memories are better than mine. Yeah, what's your go-to memory? It was when uh, I almost killed you that one time. 
The first I, time uh, I, I drove in a car with you that time. Yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad that you knew that. That's what it was when I almost accidentally turned a flatbed into a stunt rope. <laughs> Matthew, would you like to tell the story? Keep your eyes on the road, everybody. Oh. So uh, I had kind of freshly gotten my driver's license. Uh, this was back when I was 16, I want to say. And uh, we were driving to a choir thing because uh, we were nerds that had no life. Um, I still don't. I don't know about you, Christian. I mean, I'm, I, I, I like to think I'm getting there, but I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. And so you know, we were probably running late because that's usually what would happen when we drove somewhere together. Yep. And uh, I took my eyes off the road for a second, and we went through an intersection. But I didn't notice that the intersection immediately forward. Uh, had a red light and stopped at that red light was a flatbed truck. And I realized a little too late for comfort that, uh, it was not moving and that, uh, I would have crashed like two weeks into having my license. Yeah. And we uh, very much almost pulled off a Dukes of hazard stunt. It was, it was kind of wild. And that would have been pretty unfortunate because realistically we probably would have survived, but, um, then, choir, then. then I wouldn't be able to hold over my brother that I have not totaled the car mm-hmm. and he has. Oh, dang. A little bit of brother on brother psychological violence. All right. Um, psychological warfare, one might say. No. See, I think the go to memory for me, since we're you know, doing these memory back and forths has to be the running late for district choir. That was memory too. Yeah, like that one's got to be my go-to just because – and I, I know that we've told the Mother Hubbard uh, story on the podcast, but I know we, I don't think we've told the being late for district story. I don't believe we have. We might have though. But uh, all because you had to stop for coffee that morning. I did. <sighs> We, we, were, we almost missed district choir because you had to stop for coffee. Hey, we, we weren't even the last ones there. <laughs> well, technically, the last person there just never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Ozzy. Poor, poor Ozzy. Ozzy missed, Ozzy missed district choir. Yeah, so, no, we, me and Matthew show up thinking we're going to be, like, super late. We get on the bus, and everybody's on the bus about to leave, and all of a sudden, everybody looks around and goes, wait. Wait, where's where's Ozzy? So, I call I call Ozzy and uh, Sarah, another uh, friend of mine, friend of ours who uh, hasn't been on the show yet, calls his mom. And so, at the same time, they both pick up an answer, and it's me calling Ozzy at like whatever early time it was in the morning, so how early we left for district choir, and being like, "Hey, man, where are you?" And he was like, "What do you mean where are you?" I was like, "For for districts." And he goes, "Oh, oh, 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 shit, shit, mom." Mom, and then, like on, on the other line, you hear his mom coming to go. Ozzy, you gotta get up. Ozzy, you gotta get up. And then, and then Ozzy's mom was like, "Don't, don't worry, he'll be there to Sarah." And then hung up. And then he hung up about ever like telling me anything. He's like, "We didn't know what happened until you showed up, like for districts, and you just walked in." And we we're like, "All right, Ozzy's here. All right." Man. Uh. I think the biggest, saddest thing come away from that experience, though, Matthew, was the fact that for the longest time, I thought I was the, I was the person that come up with the well, we're giving her all she's got, Captain line. I thought that that was an original Christian line, and then I found that it's from a movie. <laughs> I didn't. I thought it was an original for so long. Hey, you know, sometimes the same thing can evolve organically, uh, separately, in That's two true. different groups. So... Uh, that's very you know, true. Maybe you know. Maybe you can just tell yourself that you came up with it yourself. I feel like I'm gonna keep doing that and just live a lie. You know. Realistically, you probably didn't. Yeah. No. No. Realistically, I know I didn't. <laughs> I thought oh, you got it from a Futurama episode. Oh. I'm pretty sure it's from Braveheart. 
Yeah, little known movie. Uh, most, yeah, uh, yeah, little indie most, film. Uh, one best film heard. at the Sundance Festival. <laughs> um, of Just course, not to be confused out. with the masterpiece of Homeward Bound, but you know. Um, so a weird thing happened this week. You're not weird. It's actually really cool, and it happened. It didn't happen the way I thought it was going to. Right. So. Did you watch Braveheart? <laughs> No, it's, it, I've never actually watched Braveheart all the way through, but sure, and I know I should, right. but I haven't. Um, but so uh, college classes started for me this week, as I'm pretty sure classes in school started for everybody everywhere, or maybe not yet. But most people I know that I know started on Monday. And in my theater voice three class, we were uh, talking about my podcast and they were arguing back and forth on the uh, great question, who would win in a fight? Um, the Shaquille O'Neal sized loaf of Wonder Bread or 15 baby ducklings that we discussed back on episode six of That's the Flavor. And we are arguing back and forth, having this grand old large discussion. Um, and all of a sudden, uh, my professor walks back in from break and goes, oh, what are you guys talking about? And everyone's like, oh, we're talking about Christian's podcast. And c- come to find out, she's like, oh, that's really cool that you have a podcast. Like, um, and then like we just kind of kept carrying on. But then later on, as we're back in class, it came back up again because we were they, people were still arguing about it. And she was like, "Wait, so what's the name of this podcast?" And now come like now my voice three professor listens to my podcast, oh. which is really it's weird because that's not how I thought that that would go. And then, but it's really really cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, hello, professor. But the only unfortunate thing is. Uh, her being my voice professor is now I'm just going to get critiqued on my diction and sentence structure and ah. my vocal clarity. So like, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. And yeah, now I, I feel like I've got to just constantly be, be on edge, you know? Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. I can go yeah. to full central Pennsylvania and not have to care about it. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Guys, I'm being graded. Don't, don't fail this for me. No. Uh, joking. Of course. Joking, of course. But normally I do this towards the end of the episode, but I'm kind of curious now that I brought it up. So, Rob, Matthew, of course, we don't have to go. I don't want to make another second episode of this, but I've been asking all the guests that they've been coming back on the show what their opinion is on the Great War. Who uh, And who would they choose in the fight? The Shaquille O'Neal sized loaf of Wonder Bread or the 15 oh. baby ducklings? When you say Great War, I, I <laughs> you can imagine that I was confused. Because I was going to choose the side that won. Is there going to be a duckling war too? Then, I mean, there is another who would win in a fight question. That is the Second Great War, but um, it's the Second Great War. <laughs> what uh, I say it's the Greater War. All right. Is the loaf of bread sentient and intelligent? Right. So no. Oh, then it, it, then easy. Fifteen baby ducklings. Yeah, you think I they mean, can eat that much bread and not die? That's what I say too. Yeah, easy. I mean, like think like think about it. who would win in a fight between me and Mount Rushmore. Right? <laughs> I can always walk away and resupply. Mount Rushmore <laughs> is at the mercy of me. That's a fair point. Now, here's here's my I think the biggest flaw that people don't realize, and why I think the bread could sleep this all away. So, ducklings are small creatures, right? No. Oh, oh, okay. Well, Never mind. Relative. But if they're just chomping away at the bottom of this big Shaquille O'Neal sized loaf of bread, and then it tumbles, and it, what if it squishes them? I think the bread could win just by sheer luck, you know? Well, I mean, Wonder Bread, that's not, that's not super dense. I don't think a big loaf falling on some ducklings would kill them. It would have to kill all 15 at once. I recognize, I recognize the strategy, uh-huh, but uh-huh. I wouldn't bet on it. Also, Fair. I respect we were, it. We were never informed as to the uh, orientation and positioning of the loaf. True. Oh, it's standing, it's standing up. It's not laying on its side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, the, the ducklings would have to be comically bad it was their approach to eating this Wonder Bread. <laughs> Although, then again, Rob, Rob, you are on a comedy podcast, so... So, so the idea is that you're, you're telling me there's a better chance than otherwise 
that all 15 ducklings will start on one side of the bread and eat into it as though cutting down a tree, <laughs> unwittingly trapping themselves beneath the trunk of the bread, which will then be heavy enough, given that it is the size of Shaquille O'Neal, to squash them all in one go. Here's my thing. thing. Even if the bread falling over only takes out half of them, that means the ducklings only have half of their forces to take out the bread, right? So, and there's no way seven ducklings are getting through that much bread. Uh, you ever bought bread, Christian? <laughs> you, ever, you ever sat down and said, it's me versus this bread? <laughs> this is simply too much bread. <laughs> I think I'll die. <laughs> Well, Look, Rob, I have to break it to you. I actually have, but that's just because I'm dumb. Why? <laughs> well, you're, the fact that you are still alive leads me to believe that you won, so congratulations. And also, that, uh, that Brett is not a terribly tough opponent to fight. Not for humans. I, I don't think that Brett has killed more than a few creatures. <laughs> All right, hang on. How many ducks has bread killed? Come on, give me a number. I don't know if you're going to be able to find that kind of number. We're going to say seven, and I feel like seven's enough to warrant my bread worry. But Matthew, you bring that, up a good point that most less, statistical research on the lethality of bread is anthropocentric. Also, seven is less than 15. That's true. Yeah, but what if it's just a lucky strike, dude? But, Again, I, I get it from a science standpoint, but I don't think you guys are factoring in the comical amount of luck that I feel like these ducks have on their side. But... Oh. It's like flipping a one-sided coin, you know? Well, but you can't end the argument by just saying <laughs> that the bread's going to get lucky. <laughs> well, I, I understand what you're saying here, but the bread is, is going to win. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, you can't. Unfortunately, of course, audience, as I've already heard some of your responses and stuff as well, we may never know. Until somebody puts a Shaquille O'Neal-sized loaf of Wonder Bread up against 15 baby ducklings, we, we truly won't know. Uh, and I don't know when that day will happen. Will I be the first to do it? Probably. Uh, will I probably uh, make sure the ducks are safe and don't actually die? Probably. Um, no, that, that's tipping the balance. Okay, but... I, outside intervention. Yeah, but I can't just let 15 baby ducks die. I can. Fuck it, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Jeez. I'll kill them myself. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, fifteen baby ducks versus me. Uh, that's <laughs> a different story. Raw like, versus a Shaquille O'Neal sized loaf of Wonder Bread. Fifteen baby duckling sized Robs versus a Wonder Bread sized <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> now that's an interesting question because <laughs> in my in my current form. I ca I could not fight Shaquille O'Neal with any hope of winning. But fifteen small boys, small robs, you know. Fifteen of me that are roughly a quarter the size of of of, of Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, but if you think about it. There's fifteen of you, right? So if you stack four of you on top of each other, and you get like a little like four stack, you're the same size. Well, if we tried that, we'd probably die before. <laughs> We get to but Mr. O'Neill. What if Mr. O'Neill falls over on the 15 <laughs> rocks? <laughs> I, I, guess, I feel like I some guess of those rocks are dead. I guess, I guess we'll never know. It's, it's impossible to reason out. Literally no way to answer this question. There, there isn't. Now, I think Plato was, actually came up with the original version of this question. He threw it into... <laughs> Uh, you know, Republic somewhere in there is an Easter egg. It's actually, uh, it's in the stars. That's how I discovered the question. If you look up in the sky at night, uh, you can you can connect the dots of the Big Dipper to the sun, and it's it spells out um, it spells out the words that make the sentence. Yeah, <laughs> real. <laughs>
I'm in the wrong major. All right, but also I'm a feeder major. I'm in the wrong major for that. Also, Wonder Bread is mo- it's, it's basically sugar. No, no, we looked into this. Are so we simple. looked into this. We did. It's not mostly sugar, unfortunately. Well, not like sugar, sugar, but the carbohydrates are so simple that it's basically sugar. Fair, those I duck- guess. Those ducklings could just keep eating it, and just like almost See, constantly. You know what I imagine when Rob said, um, "Like he he would k- kill the ducklings." I, I imagine, Pan, let's say a year from now, we set up this fight between the ducklings and and the, the bread, right? And 14 of the ducklings walk out. And somehow in this year, this next year, it turns out the last 15th duck is Rob. And he walks in in a duck suit, and he has actually joined Team Ducklings to fight the bread. And, and then you just have a big Rob in a duck suit eating bread with other ducks. I'm not sure how you got... To that conclusion, I I don't know either, but I just feel like it'd be really cool. <laughs> but it wouldn't we would the spectators would notice that one duckling is uh, considerably larger, astronomically <laughs> larger. I think it would disrupt the validity of the experiment. Ah, uh, to have one big hungry boy mixed in with all the ducklings. We'd have to run this experiment at least 20 times to, to True. see, uh, to get a better idea of what the actual uh, chances are. We do, need a, we do need a piss value of less than 0.05. <laughs> but, you know, unfortunately, we'll have to leave that discussion for a later date. Because right now I want to let you all know that That's the Flavor is brought to you by... Twitter.com slash that's the flavor. Your favorite Twitter account that goes ahead and tells you about things that might be happening that aren't happening. Like when shows might be happening. Things like that's the flavor, but it's that's so Raven. Um, or things like that's the flavor merch or other random fun tweets or asking you guys for questions, for feedback, etc. Um, that's what Twitter account's for. And definitely I've had a lot of people already come in and use it and support the show because, I don't know, the show being what it is, um, the best way that you guys can go ahead and, you know, support it is by telling other people about it or just by, like, retweeting tweets saying, hey, a new episodes are out. So the Twitter account's, like, the avenue to go ahead and do that. And from there, maybe you, see, you screenshot one of the tweets. And you're like, yo, look, this guy's funny. And then I think at that point you're actually just stealing content. So maybe don't do that. But you guys know what I'm getting at. The Twitter account, go ahead, give it a follow. It's at That's the Flavor on Twitter. No apostrophe because apostrophes are dumb. But, Yeah. That is the Twitter account, and that is also our ad for this week, which I think, I've, I think you know, I'm going to have to unfortunately retire, retire, uh, retire the Twitter account ad after this, after this week. I feel like it's run its course. It's helped us out. So yeah, if you don't want to forget about the Twitter account, I feel like now's the time to follow. Now's the call to action, you know? How what flavor do you want to be? How much do they pay you to say that? All right. I I can't really talk specific numbers, but let's just say I I get paid in exposure bucks. <laughs> um, lots of exposure bucks. Can I can I buy your merch with exposure? Can I expose myself? I I mean yeah. hypothetically I could just send you merch, but you know. Sure. Yeah, I'm not doing that, Rob. I need money. You could be an influencer. No, I'm joking. Uh, we don't even like, merch is something that we've actually had the table a little bit for now, so. It's a fun topic to talk about and think, and it's it's still there. Um, and just table it in a way that I tabled it for a little bit, and but it's still there. It's still a concept we're talking on, but also joking. Oh, hey, the train's coming by. Hi, train. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not in the audio. Uh, but yeah, so like merch is something I have to table, but that's like a business discussion for business meetings. But um, which are just meetings with myself, so that's kind of awkward. But that's the post show. <laughs> no, the post show is something else. Wink. Oh, but <laughs> that's a shame because I was gonna buy enough bumper stickers to plaster one of the walls at your college with them, and thereby frame you for vandalism. <laughs> oh, hey, Robert. Speaking of being in college, have you gotten coronavirus yet? No, I haven't. I have not received the sickness. Um, are you are you down with the sickness? <laughs> No, I'm fine for now. Uh, 
<laughs> we actually we have been doing a very good job of of preventing the virus. We're in a very safe area, and uh, we've we've put down some very strict guidelines. It's actually my job to enforce some of the guidelines. So we should be able to be here until at least like the end of September. Hey, that's those are pretty good numbers. Yeah, I think yeah. so. That's like one in seven. The only problem is we're right next to a maximum security prison, which, as you know, is full of an exploited population. So there's a pretty good chance that the coronavirus will come to us through there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Once the public schools go back, it's all over for the colleges. Yeah, I think so. The colleges can make their stand, hopefully. Stay strong for a little bit. But, But, you know, we all know. I worry that we're putting people's lives at risk unnecessarily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, legitimately, I feel like that's... I don't the know. Flavor. That's that, the flavor. I don't, know, I don't want to get into this discussion too much, at least not on, on this show, but I feel like that's every sane person's worry. And that's not to say that people aren't sane, but you know what I mean. And that's, that's all I'll say on that, because at the end of the day, I just want people to be safe. And that goes for you guys as well, audience. I'm not trying to tell you what to believe or anything like that. That's not the the job here if that's the flavor, you know. But just be safe, guys. Like, I, you know, these are all crazy times and crazy things are going on. And I don't know. Just make sure you guys are taking care of yourself and the people around you because that's that's important. And sometimes it might not seem like it's important or it may not seem like it's the number one priority. But I don't know. Just Just make sure you guys are... Are you know doing the things, keeping each other safe, and that has been the one time Christian will get serious during this show. Um, so, Matthew, I'm pretty sure if I have my mic on, uh, the audience is gonna get some some good uh, train audio. I mean, they got good train audio for me, so I mean, because uh, she's here, like. Do you guys, so everybody, like, you know, there's those clips in movies, right, where people go ahead, they hop on the train, and, like, they're like, oh, they escape, or they're heading off to a new life, right? Like, do you guys ever just want to do that? Oh, no. yes. Yeah. Or, like, think what yes. it would be, like, All just, like, time. disappear? and no like questions. Just... No questions asked. All yeah? the time. I think about it every waking moment. Because <laughs> <laughs> so I always wonder what it would be like to just, like, hop on a train and zoom away, you know? There's a train that runs uh, about a, about a mile from my from the campus that I'm on, and every time it goes by, which is multiple times a day, I think to myself, "Man, what if I just jumped on the back of that freight train, took it to wherever it was going, and then uh, tried to get a job somewhere under the name like I don't know Luke or something, and just said, "Hi, don't worry about my social security or citizenship." I just want a job, and I want to live here where nobody knows who I am. <laughs> Picking it's apples like, or something. It's like a fresh start, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Some of us like to think that I just like hop on a train to go become an orange farmer. I don't know if the trains in this area are going to help you with that. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't have to be a successful orange farmer, Matthew. Oh. Um... I just said I want to be an orange farmer. You could hop on a plane. Yeah, yeah, I could hop on a plane. Hop on the back of a plane. Nobody will see you. I mean, I'll, I'll get a squirrel suit. Yeah. There you Wait, go. that's not what they're called. Wait, that's not what they're called. Hang that on. might make you more <laughs> conspicuous. Yeah, hang on. They're not, I don't think they're called squirrel. No, they are called squirrel suits. I think you might be looking for an uh, oxygen tank. Oh, oh yeah. That might be useful up there too. At those heights, with with my lungs, I mean, you can do altitude training and work your way up to thirty thousand feet. What if I do undersea training? That's the no. opposite of the way you want to go. Yeah, but I feel like if I do enough undersea training, then I can probably just become a fish. That's how evolution works. <laughs> this raises but- serious metaphysical questions. <laughs> Fish were just doing altitude training and accidentally uh, developed lungs. Huh. I never thought about it like that. Trust me, I'm a 
mediocre biology student. I mean, what do you think fish think about, right? Nothing. You really think so nothing? I actually, Christian, this is something I haven't told you. I've changed majors recently. I was a biology and chemistry major, but now I'm a philosophy major. So looking at this from the opposite side of the, of the discussion from where Matthew was starting, I also think that fish think about nothing. <laughs> you know, so I was talking with Ozzy and anybody who listened to, I believe, episode five when we were talking about that's the flavor being a carnival goldfish. Um, so speaking of carnival goldfish and fish, right? I had to, I had one of my goldfish back in the day ate the other one. Yeah. Yeah. So get this, right? So I went. Uh, the town I live in has has a fair, as most towns do. And I went and I want a fish, right? And I had him, and he was like my my buddy. His name was Swimmy. Um, and mind you, this time when I won him, I was like a sophomore in high school, and I still named him Swimmy. Um, but take that as you will. Um, so you know, Swimmy was a really good fish, I'm and not then. Take that. <laughs> um, I take it lying down. <laughs> Is that how you are right now? You can take the fish lying down. I wish I was lying down. Maximum entropy, minimum energy. <laughs> God, fish are cool. But, Sorry, tell us more about Swimmy. <laughs> Some of the good fish. Fast forward a year. Uh, I went to the carnival, won another fish, and they were. Then, then I brought that fish home. His his name was Swimmy too. Um. Wait, not, I have not a swimmy as well, but swimmy too. Like I, I. Um, answered. Continue. Yes. <laughs> no, they weren't just both named Swimmy, and I forgot which one is which. It helped because one was albino, so like I always knew which Swimmy I was talking to. So, I'm sure that they got real confused. <laughs> That's kind of cruel. <laughs> yeah. But one day I was at school, came home. Only to find out that Swimmy One had eaten Swimmy Two, and that can, that can only be one. <laughs> and and so then the next close. day, Swimmy One died from eating Swimmy Two. Rob, wasn't there some guy who said that, like, the uh, the eater will always have less pleasure than the eaten because the eaten will no longer exist? Oh, uh, you know, I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know who off the top of my head may have said that, but uh, I would like to meet him or her. Like, because I just, they sound like fun. That's just a whole that's a whole fish, guys. No. Also, no. <laughs> From a philosophical <laughs> point of view, no. So. Yeah, that's just a fun carnival goldfish story and fish story that I felt like telling. Relating to fish, of course. I have a fish story. Yeah, hit me for fish story. It's from my dad. Uh, My dad grew up in Chicago a long time ago. He's no longer there. Uh, But when he was young, he went to the pet store, and it was a four-day... This story takes place over four days. And it's, it's perhaps the shortest and also... Uh, most grandiose tragedy. He bought a uh, he bought two beta fish for his little fish tank in his house. Beta. And on on day two, he had over a hundred beta fish. Um, oh no! I don't know if it's if it's family friendly to talk about why. But on day three, he bought he bought a piranha fish because <laughs> he thought you know this will. This will like let the rest of the beta fish survive in numbers that are like conducive to health, you know, like wolves and deer in Yellowstone. Um, but on the on the fourth day, he had no beta fish left and one piranha fish that was very large. <laughs> your your dad. Oh, I'm gonna. This makes like on paper it makes sense. Let's not fault your dad for that. On paper, it makes sense. But, oh no. Okay, but Rob, what about lawnfish? What about whom? 
Lawn fish. Lawn fish? Yeah, the fish pile. Oh yeah, that was the that was a different fish story. Christian, did I tell you about this? No. It was while we were performing Macbeth. Um, I I was wa- I walked to school, of course, and on the corner of my lawn, someone dumped about two feet of dead salmon. <laughs> I think there were some bass <laughs> in there as well, and they sat there for about three days, and then they vanished. <laughs> Only the smell and the uh, recently dispossessed crows. <laughs> One crow actually, like, dive-bombed me as I was walking to school, and I think it was asking me, hey, where did those fish go? I was planning on eating that. And I, I said, I, I said, I don't know. And I, and I, I says to the crow. <laughs> Rob puts his hands up and goes, hey, man, hey, hey, I don't, I don't know, man. Hey, hey, man, hey, 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 Mr. Crow. Hey, hey, man, hey. I'm good. I'm, I'm clean. I, I don't know where the salmon went. And Mr. Crow put the knife down and flew away. That's one. That's one interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a uh, Robin. It's take that uh, that I just told you, and I'm going to turn it into a dramatic play. I don't think you should do that. The man and the crow. It's got a nice moral, but it doesn't really have a climax. Is that going to be like the sequel to The Birds? By yeah, yeah, by Daphne Du Bois. Yeah. Now, hear me out. New title idea. What if it's the man, the crow, and also the fish? I think that's slightly misleading because the actions of both the quote unquote man and the crow affect the story, and they are two crucial elements. But the fish do not act in the story. They are objects. They're not rational actors. Indeed. But I think I, I'm struggling on, like, how'd the fish get there, you know? What's I've their story? I've been wondering that for six years. <laughs> like, what's their story, though, honestly? Like, well, like do, you think, do you think they have know, family members who are still trying to, like, find out where they are? Well, I don't think... I, I guess I can't prove this. But I don't think that the family of the fish are concerned with where the fish went. Yeah? This, this is actually the basis of the plot for uh, Nemo 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if Nemo's dad just didn't care? It's like finding <laughs> Nemo, finding Dory, finding those goddamn fish <laughs> Nemo's dad wakes up and everyone's just gone he's gotta go find them all all of them are voiced by Ellen they don't have any speaking lines but they're still voiced by her the... I like to think of it as like a rip off Pokemon game and he's just gotta go around collecting all the fish and it's just Ellen voicing them and they just say what they are Oh, I was thinking that the pitiful flapping of gills and the air moving among them as the fish die in the sun would be voiced by Ellen. Yeah, I think I think, I think we're onto something. Jesus! What? You know, Rob, that would have been really helpful, actually, as a prop when we uh, we filmed that video for an English final. It would have been. It's a shame we didn't work together. Well, you you had a you had a guest star moment. Oh yeah, I brought you to that alley near my house where the factory yeah. is. Uh huh. And then we like hid in the closet in your basement. What? I wouldn't have touched the fish. I'll be honest. At that point in my life, I, I was far too squeamish to pick up the dead fish and harass anyone with it. Yeah? Now, do you think if the fish were alive, though, it would have harassed you? Well, it depends on whether or not I was, in, I was on its lawn or it was on mine. Oh. 
if I were on its lawn, I think it would have harassed me or at least investigated why I was there. But it being on my lawn, it had died long since I saw it. <laughs> this episode is, it has such a weird energy. You know what? I was hanging out with one of our mutual friends. I'll tell you who after the episode. And they said to me, you know, Rob, you're strange. Not in a bad way, but you've always kind of been strange. And I said, why didn't you tell me? We've known each other for like six years. And you let me go through the entirety of high school being strange. Why didn't you, why didn't you beat that out of me so I could become an accountant like normal people? Yeah, or just tell me, you know, like be like, hey, Rob, by the way, like that time you talked about the excruciating process of the death of a fish, that was a little... It was weird. <laughs> it's a little quirky. Yeah, but like <laughs> negative quirky. Like bad quirky. Like like bad quirky energy. Yeah. See, I think I, I feel like if someone would have told me I'm strange, I would have just said okay. And then like kept doing that. You know what I mean? That's very brave of you. I yeah. mean well legitimately <laughs> I never <laughs> I've never been one to let people's stuff phase me, at least not in a core way. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what yeah. I'd do if someone would be like, hey, man, you, you're really strange. Like, today, you know? Hey, man, you're really strange. Well, uh, all right. <laughs> On that, what are you going to do about it? You know what? You know what, Matthew? I'm going to do nothing about it because I'm a pacifist. Not really, but you in passed this moment, the test. Thank you. Because also, I don't care. But you know, you know. All right, Rob, I have a crucial question for you. Yeah. If you could be any animal in the world, which would you be and why? I was. I, I assume you're you're meaning non-human animal. Because I think being the human animal is objectively the best choice. Because, well, yeah, sure, but but throw, get, throw get, the human yeah. answer out the window. That's too easy. I would probably, I think that if I were an animal with the same like mental capabilities of like the average of that species, I would like to be a frog in some remote part of uh, North, like North America. Far okay. away from any people, uh, so that I could live my life unbothered. I dig it. I like it. Thank you. Because there are some terrible things that happen to frogs <laughs> in uh, other parts of the country. In the but, in sub but if I could just like live, I could enjoy the water and enjoy uh, being able to like you know an abundant food supply. Uh, I have many children, some of whom. Uh, survive. I I think that would be a pleasant existence. Yeah, like anything that avoids you being like a a southern frog, you know. Because I feel like your chances of survival just plummet, you know. Why the south? I I, I don't know. Cause cause my line of reasoning is like, all right, some parts of the country are more likely to hunt frogs for sure but i think the bigger danger to frogs is chemical runoff oh so if, okay so if i could be a frog that is neither hunted nor uh touched by chemical runoff that would be my ideal kind of frog yeah, I, I, hear have... I hear they're putting chemicals in the water and like turning the frogs gay well that wouldn't be a big change for me but <laughs> but some of the other mutations that chemicals cause frogs sound pretty unpleasant Now, Matthew. Yeah. Same question, different answer. I hope. What I'm are thinking, you thinking? Man, I'm thinking manatee. Yeah. Yeah, they just kind of hang out. People think they're cute, and so uh, there are actually efforts to, uh, you know, preserve the species. Yeah, you yeah. just want to be one of the saved. I respect that. You know. I respect that. 
Now, I feel like, and hit, my answer is going to be a little radical, right? And you may, you may not be with me in a second, but I, I think I'd like to be a can of SpaghettiOs. <laughs> now, so I have a couple questions. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's loaded. <laughs> yeah, Rob, hit me. Hit me with question number one. Let's let's All knock right. out like knock these out. Some of these questions you may have anticipated. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I feel like it's the it's like you know it's straight away from. I, I feel like it's not chosen as often. And maybe thinking, well, it's not chosen often because it's not an animal. But admittedly, that was my next question. <laughs> Fair I feel enough. Like that's a very good answer to the question why is it not chosen <laughs> i think so too i think we can go home <laughs> but at the same time i feel like it's just it's different you know anybody can choose to be a manatee or a frog in in north america or in wow. north <laughs> north america <laughs> but i feel like nobody's out here choosing to be a can of spaghettios again there's a pretty simple answer to that. And is that answer because it's not actually an animal, Matthew? Well, see, the definition for what a species actually is varies from person to person, depending on whom you ask. But, uh, you know, a common, you know, a point of common ground among all those people is usually that it is. Uh, a living being. Mm. Now, because the spaghettio is because the can of spaghettios probably has organisms in the can, can I still in a loophole count it as an animal? Are you guys just vetoing the spaghettios idea completely? Well, it has organisms, but not animals. I mean, if it has animals in it, then you know that, that might be a problem. Should probably well, call. Sp- SpaghettiO HQ and uh, give them a stern talking to. Right, right. Matthew, I think you bring up some really, some really key objections, but i i want to I want to go from a different angle, circumventing the problem of whether or not SpaghettiOs is an animal. Why would you choose to be a can of SpaghettiOs, assuming that you retain your sentience? Your entire life would be waiting to be eaten and then being eaten. All right. I mean, but think about reincarnation. Not every time you get reincarnated is a banger. That doesn't mean I'm going to choose to be something. Like, it'd be like, it'd be like, that's like saying, hey, if you could choose one activity, what would it be? And I say, being broken on the wheel. And you say, why? Why would you do that? That sounds terrible and painful. And I say, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. But like, <laughs> but like, what's the next best option? Like a pistol shrimp? Like, I don't actually. Okay, to scratch that. Pistol shrimp are actually really cool. But like, I don't know. I I feel like can of spaghettios just screams to me. You know. <sighs> This might this might circle back to our discussion of being of whether or not it's it's uh it's preferable to be strange. But one of the reasons that you cited for choosing to become a can of spaghettios was that it was it was different. It was off the beaten path. I I w- I'm I'm going to describe an action to you that I took that is also off the beaten path. However, I think you will agree with me that. Uh, it is not an action that you want to take. And because of this, you, I think you will agree that, that choosing something because it is off the beaten path is not a sensible thing to do. While I was working at a, uh, an eatery, a cafe, I hmm. attempted to cut off the tip of my left index finger with a grease knife. Hmm. Hmm. That was off the beaten path. <laughs> I can't but, say I've met another person who has, who has attempted this endeavor. But I quickly realized that it was not what I wanted to be doing. 
Hmm. See, I don't disagree. I think I did cho choose that answer because I, I knew what I was doing. You know, I knew I knew what I was doing. I knew what, what statement I was making by saying it. As and... did I. As did I. Continue. <laughs> and I bet most of the audience is pretty divided on this one. And it's okay, audience. Don't worry. I'm I'm not dumb. I promise. Um, but I just wanted to see what reactions are like. Because I don't feel like be going off the beaten path is necessarily always a bad thing. No, that's fair. That's fair. But I will say, depending on the when you get to the extremities of going off the beaten path, then it definitely isn't the right choice. Such as attempting to cut off the tip of your left index finger or choosing SpaghettiOs as an animal to be. So you admit that this is a bad thing. I admit that I made a mistake and I tried to hold my ground for a little bit, but I come to the conclusion that SpaghettiOs is not an animal. Was this the second Great War? <laughs> no, not, any, not even. I think no. it's very brave of you to admit that you've made a mistake. I'm going to name this episode uh, I Want to Be SpaghettiOs. But... In this episode, I have a confession. <laughs> <laughs> Watch those, watch those listens skyrocket. Apology video. Oh, God. Apology podcast. A 50-minute apology podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but I'm sorry a lot, you know? So, so you can knowing... just make every podcast an apology podcast, then? Fair point. <laughs> now... <laughs> Now, if I were to truly choose an animal, I have to go foil shark. See, that's a. I think we're getting somewhere now. I foil sharks are a, so cool, dude. Like, I think that's a much more defensible answer. Like, because they're just so cool. Like, and they're, the thing is, they're not really that threatening because they can't actually swallow humans. They're whales. Uh. No, like that, like legitimately, like their mouths are really big, but their throats are only like three centimeters wide, because they just only eat krill. They just eat huge amounts of krill, like whales do. So it's actually really cool. It's like you can just what kind a, of flip around in their mouth, but you're not going anywhere. What attracts you to this animal? Um. So when I was younger, my <laughs> grandparents. <laughs> I was. Gonna, I was gonna jokingly interject. By saying something about, like, well, back when he was young. <laughs> I didn't even have to. So when I was younger, my grandparents uh, took me and my brother and my family and uh, stuff like that to the Georgia Aquarium. Um, and for those who don't know, the Georgia Aquarium is a really cool place. Oh, God, I just... Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're good. I was getting breath. Oh, yeah, you know, it's just it's great. Whale sharks. <laughs> they grow so fast. No, but I, like, slurred a sentence together and then had to cough but for those of you that don't okay. know there we go i gotta make sure i follow that diction it's been slipping a little bit i just slurred like five words together uh are you gonna cut this part out probably not wait i'm sorry you said you <laughs> <laughs> dang it <laughs> well now i am no hey, probably just... not sleep there. but um you have the Georgia Aquarium. The Georgia Aquarium has four whale sharks, um, all in one tank, and it's really cool. And they're they're huge. Like it, it's crazy because like you know they have, and then that same tank they have like manta rays and stuff like that. And it's like just the sheer size of the animal. It's it's crazy. Like it could eat a Shaquille O'Neal size loaf of Wonder Bread. But oh, just... and its throat is only three it's... centimeters big. It's yeah, but but the mouth it can just float around in the mouth water and dissolve, and the particles go down the throat. Did you just did you just retcon whale sharks? No, because I'm not def I'm not changing their throat size. <laughs> like they can still because they can still swallow like okay not swallow they can encompass a human with their mouth. Yes. So, and every time they go to encompass things with their mouth, their mouth still fills up with water. So if it goes in encompasses the Shaquille O'Neal sized loaf of Wonder Bread. It's going to dissolve. It's dubious, 
but I'll allow it. Thank you. So give, actually, you know what? Give me that National Geographic. Scrap the the fifteen baby ducklings, Shaquille O'Neal, um, Wonder Bread fight we had going on and plan for a special next time, some sometime next year, and give me that. Give me a whale shark versus the bread. You know, who wins then? National Geographic. Shaquille O'Neal sized whale sharks. <laughs> Give me that one, National Geographic. Let me see who wins in that fight, because you know who it's going to be? It's going to be the whale shark. Um, but on that note, we are going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of That's the Flavor. Um, thank you guys, Matthew and Rob, for being on this episode. I appreciate it. Like I said, it had a different kind of energy. Uh, and Rob, I hope you enjoyed your first time being on the show. I hope it was everything you hoped and dreamed. It's about what I expected. I'll take that as a compliment. could be taken a lot of ways. Yeah, I'm going to take that as a compliment, though. Sure. That's important. That's important. Uh, um, Matthew, thank you for coming back on the show and being one of the returning guests. Um, I really appreciate it as well. Christian, it is always a pleasure. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. And I'm glad that, honestly, I, I'm glad that the guests that I've had on have had a good time on the show. And I'm happy that that's been something I've been able to facilitate and keep happening. So being able to hear from you guys that this episode is also a good time is definitely definitely good to hear yeah, it's um, good to hear your voice again yeah no definitely it's good to hear yours as well because it's, just, it's been a minute man so we definitely gotta gotta hang out whenever you're around maybe go put some salmon on people's lawns yeah once i get the coronavirus i'll be back in town so I'll yeah and we, 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 yeah. Thing, we can put the salmon on the lawn and then blame it on matthew no right don't you do it the one that i was planning to frame for vandalism yeah, but I feel like we gotta. I feel like you can't frame me, right? But in this situation, it'd be fairly easy to frame you, seeing as you did it. <laughs> Wait a minute. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep moving on. I don't, I don't want to get trapped here. No, 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 not, not not happening. I see what's happening. I don't like it. There's been an admission of guilt. Nope, nope, no, there hasn't. I've Stay tuned for next this. episode for when Christian is arrested. <laughs> yeah, ASMR. <laughs> But audience, I want to thank you all for watching That's the Flavor. And seriously, I was going to do this at the beginning of the episode, but it just kind of didn't make sense then in the way that things were flowing and happening. Uh, I also want to say thank you guys for your support of That's the Flavor since it's returned. Again, this is episode eight. So we are now, when this comes out, it'll be four episodes out since the return of That's the Flavor with episode 10 coming up two weeks from now. And, you know, it's simple math, but it's kind of crazy to think about. The support on the show has been crazy, but also... Um, keep that, keep, keep it coming. Keep the feedback, keep the questions coming. Cause they've been a lot of fun to answer and talk about. And I, it's de been definitely a lot of fun to see the suggestions and be able to take those into account as well. And if you're someone who does have feedback about the show, don't be afraid to say it. Cause I'm not going to take it and, you know, freak out or rage. I just like good criticism. And so, and you're just going to say that you hate the podcast. And I mean, that's whatever I'll like, I'll ignore that. But any good criticism I'm always open for, you guys can go ahead and tweet at me at That's the Flavor Twitter account. There's Again, as I keep saying every episode, there's a lot of fun stuff in the works, but stuff that I don't want to talk about until it's about ready to happen. But just stay tuned for all of that, all that stuff you don't know about. Um, and yeah, just thank you guys so much for supporting That's the Flavor and supporting the show because I'm just, I really like doing it. So being able to have that support and knowing that there's other people that enjoy it as well is definitely a lot of fun. And until next time, I've been Christian Slider. This has been That's the Flavor, and keep it flavorful, everyone. See you later. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.